Good morning, everybody, and welcome back into the Sea Show. Got your boy Chris here coming at you from an undisclosed location here in Alabama. I thought it was time for a, another rendition of Saturdays, a fall's gone by now that we are entering another college football season. I hope all of y'all are excited, as am I. So I'm going to step back here into my childhood and bring you one of the most favorite games I have from that era. And that was a game that will live in infamy. October 8th, 1988, saw 4-0 Auburn, averaging 40 points a game, ranked number four in the nation, go in to Death Valley on a Saturday night to play LSU, who despite the previous season's 10-2 record, were now reeling after consecutive losses to Ohio State and Florida. And Skylar Davis, if you're out there, buddy, this one's for you. This game right here would forever be known as the Earthquake Game. Yes, the Earthquake Game. I'll explain all that a little bit later, but first let's get to the game. It was a slow, arduous build to a sensational ending. LSU only picked up one first down in the first quarter, and Auburn picked up five, but to no avail, as they couldn't capitalize. Still, it felt inauspicious for LSU as Auburn moved up and down the field, gaining 92 yards. It felt like that it was only a matter of time and the dam would break and the number four team would take over. The second quarter proved even less exciting as Auburn managed only 62 yards of offense, with LSU doing even worse, picking up another first down in the second half. LSU's rushing attack managed 14 yards on 12 carries, and after 12 punts, eight penalties, and one turnover. This game found Auburn with a three-to-nothing lead at the half. LSU started off the second half, and Hodson actually completed a pass to a first down, but three plays later, naturally, they had to punt. Auburn got it going. Reggie Slack completed a few passes before Auburn went to vintage Auburn and started to pound the rock. Auburn got the ball down to the 29-yard line, facing a third down and seven. Reggie Slack dropped back to pass, but threw an interception to LSU defensive back Greg Jackson. After a run for no gain, an incomplete pass, LSU found itself in third and long, and finally Tommy Hodson came through, delivering a 17-yard strike to tie in Ronnie Halliburton. Hodson then came through with back-to-back -back passes to wide receiver Tony Moss for 9 and 23 yards, moving them into Auburn territory. After Auburn snuffed out Moss on a reverse attempt and an incomplete pass. On third and long, Hodson looked for wide receiver Tyke Talbert, but the ball fell incomplete. However, the Auburn Tigers interfered with him, setting LSU up with a first and 10. LSU now knocking on the red zone, found themselves in a third and long again, and were thrown for a two-yard loss. And to make matters worse, they were called for holding, pushing them back to the 40-yard line and out of field goal range. Auburn and LSU then exchanged a couple of punts, and Auburn got the ball back and ran it twice to close out the third quarter, holding on to a slim 3-0 lead. Slowly, Auburn progressed down the field, eating up small chunks of yard until a personal foul call stalled their momentum. On third and 18 from their own 42-yard line, Auburn coach Pat Dye put the hands in Reggie Slack, who found Lawyer Tillman for a first down. Slack came through again, facing a third and 10 from the LSU 39-yard line. He found wide receiver Greg Taylor for 19 yards, setting them up at the LSU 20-yard line. But there, the LSU defense stiffened and forced Auburn to kick a field goal. With 10 minutes to go in the game, the Auburn Tigers led 6 to nothing. After trading punts, LSU got the ball back with 6.17 to go, and Hodson took the field unaware of what was about to take place. After an incomplete pass, Hodson hit Moss for 17 yards, followed by another incomplete pass. On second down, Hodson found tight end Willie Williams for 12 yards. After an incomplete pass and a gain of five yards, LSU found itself third and five on their own 41 with 413 left to play, and Archer called a timeout. Hodson went to the well again and found Moss for a 20-yard gain. Suddenly, LSU was threatening with a first and 10 at the Auburn 21-yard line. Hodson threw an incomplete pass and gained a yard on second down after a busted play. Now here LSU set third and nine from their 20-yard line. Hodson looked for Moss again, but his pass fell incomplete. Now LSU faced fourth and nine from the 20-yard line. Hodson delivered, finding tight in Williams again for a nine-yard gain, setting up first and 10 at the 11-yard line, making it crystal clear this would be the nexus of the game. 
After two incomplete passes, Hodson placed the ball between Auburn defenders into the waiting hands of tight end Ronnie Halliburton, who dropped the ball. So the stage is set. It's now fourth and ten from the Auburn 11. All eyes are on Tommy Hodson as he brings the Tigers to the line. Moss comes into motion towards the formation. Hodson snaps the ball, settling into the pocket. He stands tall as the pressure starts to collapse in on him from defensive tackle Ron Stallworth, who will lay into him just a moment later. Hodson fearlessly pulls the ball back and unleashes a bullet over the heads of the Auburn defense, driving a stake into their heart, hitting Eddie Fuller in the back of the end zone behind three Auburn defenders will give LSU a 7-6 victory, setting off an eruption that registered on the seismographs. But this is where legends are born. Did it really set off an earthquake? Well, maybe, but maybe not. Several geologists have went back and said that, yes, there was some seismic activity. However, this is not uncommon during a football game. What made this uncommon was one of the students who worked in the seismology department went by the lab to check out how the game was going and happened to see the final play. And he's seen the crowd reaction register on the Richter scale, very small. So maybe it was really an earthquake or maybe that's just what happens after a huge game winning play in every college football stadium. Ultimately, this game right here kept Auburn out of a national championship showdown with Notre Dame at the end of the season. I hope everybody enjoyed this rendition of Saturdays of Falls Gone By, and I'll see you next time.